Chapter 8 is all about problem solving using trigonometry. We're going to start with 8.0, a little right triangle refresher. When given a right triangle and you're asked to find a certain side length in that triangle, we have these options for solving. We could apply Pythagorean theorem if we know two of the three sides, or we could use Sokotoa if we know an angle and at least one other side. And those would be our options for finding side length. When you're trying to find an angle measure in any right triangle, first we're going to keep everything in degree mode, so that's going to be kind of nice. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode and we can keep it like that for the entire chapter. Your choices for finding angle measures. We could do just the triangle sum rule, which means in any given triangle, the three angles always have a sum of 180. Therefore, if you know two of the angles, you can just subtract from 180 to get the missing angle. If not, if we know side lengths instead, we could take the inverse of basically Sokotoa, the inverse of either sine, cosine, or tangent, like we did in our last chapter. When rounding, we'll round both sides and angles to the nearest tenth, so we'll stay consistent for the whole chapter. If you have to type in a trig value and just write that answer out though, this is where we need to be more particular. Trig values need to be rounded to the nearest four decimal places. And that's why on our, work or on our worksheets, yeah, from last chapter, we would say like cosine theta equals 0.1234. It was always four places past the decimal. Our goal, though, will be to try and wait to round until we plug everything in one time, and that way we're only rounding our answer one time. All right, so here are all these rules. Let's see how to apply them in a given problem. Our example is to solve each triangle. For example A, it says triangle DEF with right angle E. So let's just draw that picture first. I'm going to create a right triangle and identify my right angle in the corner using that angle symbol. Now that angle has to be the letter E. For the rest of the triangle then, D and F can be in either location, either at the top or that bottom right. So there's drawing our picture. Now marking the information with what we know, it says DF, the length of that segment is 20, that's gonna be our hypotenuse. And then DE, from top to bottom on that left-hand side, has a length of six, so that's all we know. To solve the triangle means we need to find the rest of our missing parts. So we know three things, we need to calculate the other three things. I see right away that we know two of our three sides, so we can calculate our missing side length EF by using Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to mark this side X right here and just use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That means the two sides being squared, six squared and X squared, have to equal the length of the hypotenuse being squared. Six squared is 36, and 20 squared is 400. If we move that 36 over, we're gonna get X squared is equal to 364. To get X by itself, we'll take the square root of each side, so grab your calculator, plug that in. The square root of 64 is not a perfect square, so we'll round it to the nearest tenth, 19.1. And that's one of our three answers. We also have to find the missing angle measures. So I'm gonna start with angle D, just because I'm gonna pick it and we'll see what happens. So we can't subtract from 180 because we only know one angle so far. That means we're gonna to have to use the inverse for Sokotoa. To do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to mark on my picture that angle D is theta. The six and the 20 are gonna be helpful for us. Six is the adjacent side, and 20 is the hypotenuse. So to find angle D, we're gonna take the cosine of that angle. So I'm gonna say cosine D equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which is six over 20. So to get angle D by itself, just like what we did in chapter 7b, we take the inverse of the other side. Grab your calculator, make sure you're in degree mode, and to get the cosine inverse, just type that in and round your answer to the nearest tenth. If I type cosine of six over 20, I get approximately 72.5 degrees. That would be the missing angle for D. And then let's get our last angle, angle F. Now, here's a couple of ways you can do this. 
We could do triangle sum rule here because we know that angle E is 90. The only caution I have for you on that is if you calculated angle D wrong, then you'd automatically get angle F wrong as well. So what I like to do is just kind of stick with my trig definitions, but I'm going to erase the adjacent and, I, well, I'll keep the hypotenuse, but I'm going to erase adjacent and that kind of angle location because now we want to try to find angle F. So if angle F is our theta, that makes 6 now the opposite side. And if we're trying to figure out the angle opposite and hypotenuse, that means we're taking the sine of F. And look at this, the fraction is the same. Opposite over hypotenuse for this one would be 6 over 20. Now to get angle F, we'll just do cosine, or excuse me, sine inverse. So we type that in on our calculator, and we should get approximately, I should probably do approximately over here, F is approximately 17.5 degrees. And if we add angle F and angle D and angle E, we do in fact get 180 degrees. So we were given three sides or three things about the triangle and we had to find the other missing things. In the example on the right, we have triangle ABC with right angle C. So the first thing you wanna do is just create a right triangle as accurately as possible, labeling one of your, mar or marking one of your angles at right angle, and that's going to be where we put angle C. So I'm just gonna write a C in, there, in that place. The A and the B can then go in either side, so I'm gonna put the A there and the B down here on the right. It truly doesn't matter where you put them. Now we know angle A is 35 degrees. I'll put an arc inside that triangle and label that 35. And then it says from A to B, that has a length of 14, that's our hypotenuse. Again, we know two angles and one side, so we know three things we need to solve for the other three missing things. Now this is gonna be an example where we can find the measure of angle B super quickly by using, using that triangle sum rule. So we could say 90 degrees plus 35 degrees plus angle B is equal to 180. Now 90 plus 35 is just 125, and to get B by itself, we'll move 125 over, and we get angle B equals exactly 55 degrees. So that was pretty easy. Those are the nice ones to work with. We then need to find the missing side lengths, so from A to C and from B to C. Doesn't matter which one we pick first, I'll pick that bottom segment, I'll go from B to C, and I'm just gonna label that X on my picture. Now A is the given angle, so we're gonna keep that as our theta. The 14 is the hypotenuse, and that's gonna stay no matter what. X is the opposite from that. So if we know angle A, and we're trying to find the opposite side from the hypotenuse, that would be sine. So we would take sine of our angle, which is 35, equals X over 14. Now, we have to be careful here. We want to get x by itself before we plug anything in, and that will keep our answer closest to the exact value possible. To get x by itself, we just put four, oops, I don't know why it's so fuzzy right there. There we go. We're just going to multiply both sides by 14 to get it out of the denominator. It cancels on the left-hand side, or right-hand right side, and so we have x equals, and we're just going to plug this all into our calculator. 14 times sine 35. You can enter it all in at once. It's kind of nice. If we take 14 times sine 35, we get 8.0 approximately to the nearest tenth. And that's all you got to do. Find that side length. All right, so the last side length we need is from A to C. So I'm going to write A, C. So on my picture, I'm going to current, I'm going to get rid of the X for now. Oh, it won't let me do that. Never mind. I'm not going to get rid of the X. All right, fine. We'll just make the other side length Y. Sorry about that. All right, so I'm just gonna go Y right here, and this is going to be the comparison. That's the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. That's gonna be cosine. So this just means cosine 35 equals Y over 14, adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, before you start plugging things in, let's get y by itself. We'll move that 14 to the other side. And then you just plug it in. So it's really not too, not too difficult. 14 times cosine 35 should give us a length for AC of approximately 11.5. That's approximately. And that's finding a missing, or that's solving a triangle given or using given information. 
Here's a question where we only have to find one answer. It says, what is, or find the measure of the smallest angle in a three, four, five right triangle. So that means those are the side lengths. If we draw a right triangle to kind of represent that information, like so, we have to decide where would three, four, and five go? Well, in any right triangle, the hypotenuse is always the biggest side. So that's where we're gonna have to put the five. The three and the four then can be in either side, like the top side or the, yeah, either way. So I'll put the three on the bottom and the four on the left-hand side. And that's an example of what we call a three, four, five right triangle. By definition, the smallest angle is always directly across the smallest side. That means if three is the smallest side, the angle up at the top is going to be our smallest angle. And we wanna figure out what the measure of that angle is. Since we know all three side lengths, we can pick any trig definition we want, sine, cosine, or tangent, because we can define them all knowing all three side lengths. I'm gonna just go with sine. If I write sine theta, sine by definition is opposite over hypotenuse, which would be three over five. But if I wanna find the measure of theta, we're just going to take the inverse. We just type this in on our calculator. If you type sine inverse of three fifths, we are gonna get a measure of for theta of approximately 36.9 degrees. We'll do quite a bit of application in this lesson, looking at reading a word problem, creating that right triangle, and deciding where our given information goes. Now, some of the things that we'll be looking at are just the way that angles are described in a word problem. Oftentimes you'll hear the, or you'll see the phrase angle of elevation and angle of depression. So notice in this picture, the airplane pilot would look straight out where that dotted line is. At the traffic control tower, the air traffic controller would look straight out as well. If the traffic controller looks up towards the pilot, it's they're elevating their angle. So that's called the angle of elevation. If the pilot looks down towards the traffic tower, the angle is depressing. So notice that angle two is technically over at the top, but angle one would be down here. And if you're trying to find maybe like the height, then angle one is the angle on the inside of the triangle. Now we're going to be in degree mode for all of these, so make sure your calculator is in degree mode. We'll watch our rounding rules, and our goal will just be to read each question and create a picture. And let's take it from there. It says a plane takes off at an angle of elevation of 22 degrees and travels for 110,000 feet before it levels out to reaching cruising altitude. So an angle of elevation of 22 degrees. So this means if we pick a point, I'm just gonna draw the path of the airplane and we'll say that that's where the airplane is gonna level out. So it's just gonna go like that, like so. There's our airplane. I'm just gonna go straight across and then create a right triangle from that location. If the angle of elevation is 22 degrees, that means the airplane is going up at that degree. It travels for 110,000 feet. Well, if the airplane started at the runway and is currently up in the sky, the 110,000 feet is the hypotenuse. And it says before it levels out reaching cruising altitude, find the plane's height at that time. The height would be the perpendicular distance to the ground. So that's what we're looking for. Once we draw our picture, notice we have an angle and we have a side length we know and a side length we're trying to calculate. We're going to apply SOHCAHTOA. Write this as many times as you need to in order to determine what the appropriate trig definition is for the given information. Now for this picture, from 22 degrees, the side length we wanna know is the opposite side. The side length we're given is the hypotenuse. That's going to be the sine ratio. We take sine of the angle, and set it equal to the side lengths opposite over hypotenuse. Again, get x by itself before you plug anything in, and that way you can just plug it all in at once. To get x by itself here, I'm just gonna multiply each side by 110,000. I'll do the same thing on the left-hand side if I can get that to fit over there. That cancels out. So you literally just wanna type that all in at once on your calculator. 110,000 times sine 22, would mean that this airplane is approximately 41,206 to the nearest 10th point seven, and our label is feet. You'd want all that information correct to get full credit. That's how high the plane would be in the air.
Another airplane problem, an airplane pilot spots the runway with an angle of depression of only 6.5 degrees. If the altitude of the plane is 34,325 feet, what is the distance between the runway and the point on the ground directly under the plane? First, let's create a picture showing this information. If the airplane is drawn over here on that left-hand side, like so, wow, that's a crazy looking airplane, sorry about that, and the pilot looks straight out, that would be the pilot's line of sight. As, it, as they look down though towards the runway, the angle of depression is 6.5 degrees. That's tiny. And they also says the altitude of the plane. So altitude is the same as the height. So I'll put that right underneath the plane, the 34,325. That would be the height of the plane at that time. Find the distance between the runway and the point on the ground directly below the plane. So that's gonna be like the ground distance of the plane to that runway. Now the crazy thing about that 6.5 is notice it's not inside the triangle. But that 6.5 here is going to be the same as the angle of elevation up to the airplane. Those two angles are always the same value. And if we think Sokotoa again, We know the opposite side length and we're looking for the adjacent side length. So we know opposite, adjacent, oopsie, there we go. That's gonna be tangent. So tangent of 6.5 equals 34,325 over X. So this gets a little tricky as well because X is in the denominator. There's a little bit of extra work here to get it by itself. First, I'm gonna slide this over just a little bit to make sure I have more room. Now, we wanna get x by itself because it's in the denominator of that fraction, so I'm gonna multiply both sides by x first. Canceling it out on the left, excuse me, on the right, but we have x times tangent 6.5 equals 34,325. To get x by itself, though, we're gonna to have to divide out that tangent. So I'm gonna divide tan 6.5 and then divide by tan 6.5. Now that x is by itself, we can plug that in. Oops, not right there, draw that line. All right, so I'm gonna have to write this over here off my paper a little bit. Hopefully you still have some room to fit. If we take 34,325 divided by tan 6.5, you should get an answer of approximately 301,000 feet. That would be the ground distance from the plane where it's currently at to the runway. All right, I know this video is getting long. We have just one more left. Stick with me. If a 78 foot tall tree casts a 54 foot long shadow on the ground, what is the angle of elevation of the sun to the nearest tenth? So I'm going to draw a tree over here. Very exciting. And I'm going to put the sun behind it. So the sun's going to cast a shadow for the tree on the ground. So we're going to go something like this. The tree is 78 feet tall, but the shadow would be on the ground, and that's 54 feet. What is the angle of elevation to, of the sun? So that would mean the angle that's going up towards the sun. So if that's the angle we know, and we think Sokotoa, which trig definition could we apply here? 78 is the opposite side, 54 is adjacent, so here's another tangent problem. But in this problem, we don't know what our angle is. So we're just gonna write tan theta. The opposite side is 78. The adjacent side is 54. Now, anytime we're trying to find an angle measure and we have a trig term, we're simply going to take its inverse. And if we do tan inverse of 78 divided by 54, the angle of elevation of the sun to the nearest tenth is approximately 55.3 degrees. So I'm hopeful you remember these trig definitions and these kinds of word problems from Algebra 2. We'll do a little bit of application with these tomorrow.